Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I want to talk about why I think that if you are on the edge of wanting to get into a preparedness lifestyle, and one of your plans, and probably should be, is to get land so you can move out to a rural location, now is probably a really good time to do it. This gets me into like being a financial advisor, and this is not meant as financial advice, but uh, I am going to be speculating a little bit on uh, some financials, and I think right now might be kind of a sweet spot for reasons that I'm going to describe in this video. Okay, so getting out into the country, I think, is... Uh, kind of unavoidable if you really want to be ready for the types of disaster events that a lot of preppers talk about in terms of civil unrest, you know, issues with rule of law. Uh, quite frequently here on this channel, uh, I'll get, uh, you know, the, the, the trolls that come by and talk about how I'm fear-mongering and talking about things that are very unlikely to ever happen uh, to the point where it's just kind of paranoid to even think about any of these things. Uh, that, that's getting 20 years ago i could kind of um, understand that kind of worldview because uh, you know here in the united states you know you could look easily back through history and there are plenty of examples of the types of events that preppers uh, talk about wanting to be prepared for and 20 years ago throughout the world there were plenty of places where there were events like that unfolding but uh you know people here in the united states largely were uh separated uh, spatially or temporally from those events uh you know that's not really a logical uh, you know, approach to things that, you know, because something's far away, uh, you know, either in time or space, it, it means that it's impossible. But, but you can kind of think, you can understand why people were coming at that, um, you know, from that perspective. Uh, today, uh, I still get comments like that. Well, obviously, because I'm still doing videos, I'm talking about comments that I get now, where people will, uh, you know, say this is stuff is ridiculous, none of this stuff is going to happen, which gets crazier and crazier because not only are, have things like this happen, uh, you know, historically, but uh, they're happening all over the world, and they're even happening right here in the United States presently. So uh, the the mindset people need to be in to think that this type of stuff that we talk about on prepping channels, uh, you know, being ready for, is far fetched or impossible. It's getting more and more uh, crazy, and because of that, and this is where we're uh, getting uh, to the point of this video about like why I think you should probably be getting land now, is because uh, there's only so there. Are, is only so much news that people can be hit up with um, where it is demanded that they need to ignore the evidence of their own eyes. And, you know, there's plenty of people today that are currently doing that. Again, like I mentioned, I get trolls on this channel all the time talking about how, you know, like massive power outages would, you know, that that's not that's never going to happen. <laughs> it's like presently down in uh, the American Southeast, you know, people are uh, in a, you'd like to say they're in a recovery period, but I don't think they've even gotten to that part, uh, part yet, uh, you know, following Helene, uh, you know, and, and things like this happen constantly, you know, you go back to, you know, Katrina, uh, it's like, you know, the last, you know, huge hurricane, but, you know, there's been a bunch in between there, you know, these things happen all the time, and there's only so many of these events that can really be dumped on people, uh, and, you know, some people are immune to this, but not everybody is, where, you know, people can continually, uh, reject the reality of what they see in front of them. Uh, I recently did a video, which I'd encourage you to check out. It's on the idea of time management, where uh, you know I'm talking about um, the idea that I think a lot of people are about to wake up to these uh, realities uh, of our world. Uh, you know, the data is, is very, very strong that, you know, where the United States has been uh, over the past several decades was kind of a high, sweet plateau, and I know it's been kind of tapering for a bit. But the data is suggesting that there's going to be a continued taper. And I know a lot of people like to reject data, uh, but I think you do it to your own peril. Um, you, you see that with uh, you know, our changing climate. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that just reject the data that they see right in front of them, and they continue to insist, even though you know, the information is right out there in front of them, that uh, changing the mixture of gases in our atmosphere definitely would never change the properties of that atmosphere. You wonder how many people like that, you know, make a cookie recipe and they're like, I don't have to put sugar in here. It'll be fine. You know, change the recipe. It won't change the properties of the, uh, you know, the, the end result of what I create. Um, so there, there are still people out there that can completely reject the, uh, you know, the obviousness of these things that are being forced 
in their face. But I think that that group is going to dwindle more and more as there's just more and more evidence. Now, why does this mean that you should uh, ex accelerate your plans for getting land if you have a plan to get land uh, and you know move out away from densely populated areas, which I would suggest that you do for a number of reasons. Um, the most important reason has nothing to do with emergency preparedness, despite the fact this is an emergency preparedness channel. Um, the most important reason to move out into the country is it is a really kick-ass way of life. Um, what's up? Oh, sorry, I was just, oh, just popping off a video. Get out of there. There's a bunch of wasps in that entryway. They're going crazy. They're not so much in the other one, but they're in that one. That's just Amber coming out to enjoy the outdoors, which uh, segues me you know, very well into what I was uh, talking about here. Um, it's a beautiful way of life out here. The, uh, the air is cleaner. The water is cleaner. The soundscape is cleaner. It is, it's a wonderful way of life out here. And not just in those kind of health aspects of like, you know, it's, it's calmer, it's more peaceful, there's not as much pollution, there's not as much, you know, well, air pollution, water pollution. Um, not just in those aspects. Also, it's, it's healthier mentally, I think, to exist as an organism in an, your environment, in a natural environment where uh, you can have an impact on your environment and you can see that impact. You know, maybe more people would... Uh, be understanding of things like climate change if they experienced uh, this uh, phenomena where if you go out into the environment and you do things to it, it changes. Um, I think that gives you a healthier, more realistic uh, sense of what it means to exist on Earth. I just think it's generally a physically, mentally, and emotionally healthier place being out in the country where you got some space, you got some neighbors, but you got some space, and you uh, you can do things. You know, you you, you can dig a, dig a hole in the ground without having to like fill out an eight-page form <laughs> with the local government and wait six months for approval on it. It's healthy out here. Uh, but the other reason is that you know, in emergency events, having some separation between yourself and you know other people that are you know invariably there's going to be people that are not as prepared as you. Um, Having some separation between yourself and uh, those kind of people is uh, those kind of people. Uh, it, it is a health insurance policy because, um, well, one of the big reasons that I do this channel is that I just like to share things with people. And when people come to my channel, especially trolls, <laughs> I always say, you know, you can take or leave what I have to say here. You know, I'm here to share my experience with you, but, you know, if this isn't your cup of tea and you want to insist that the world isn't as it is, that's fine. You know, go your own way. And I, I mean that uh, uh, to a certain degree, but there's another layer to it where, you know, I do want people to start preparing because it's not just, you know, uh, this, you know, kind of uh, selfless thing that I'm doing to try to help other people, but it makes the world better for me if there are more prepared people in it. Imagine yourself to be a prepper and you're in a town and you have a choice between two towns uh, and you know that you're going to survive, well have to survive through some kind of a calamity in one of these two towns. One of the towns is full of other preppers who are you know prepared for things and the other is full of people that are completely unprepared. Where are you going to be better off as a prepper? You know at the beginning you're probably going to be fine in either situation but after a while if you're surrounded by a bunch of unprepared people who end up becoming desperate you know, obviously you're better off if there's more people who are prepared in the world. So that's another reason that I do this channel is that I want to spread these ideas out to people because it's better for me also if there are more people uh, prepared. You know, it's the unprepared people that cause these problems for everybody because when there's panics, they're the ones that are running through all the stockpiles. So generally it just helps everybody for there to be more people prepared. And this is a really long way of me getting around to the fact that I think there are going to be more people starting down this road of well, prepping and maybe panic buying at the beginning of that. And uh, there are lots of uh, types of panic buying that aren't really a problem. Uh, 
you know, if people buy out like one type of olive oil, you know, there's, there's oftentimes other ones. So if you want to stock up your food, there's generally going to be a lot of options. Now, if there was some kind of a major calamity nationwide, you know, there's only three days worth of food in all the grocery stores. And if they're not getting resupplied, then, you know, yeah, you're up shit's creek. But, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about that kind of thing, at least now. I mean, yeah, start stocking food and whatever. But um, I don't see like the gates are going to shut down in 72 hours. Although if they were, here's a video. You could check out if uh, you felt that the gates were going to close. And I think I forget if it's like 48 or 72 hours, something like that. I have a, a scenario where I hypothetically go through and, and talk about, uh, you know, what it would, what you would want to do in the, you know, 9 a.m. on day one, 10 a.m. day one. You know, go through the whole thing. If you're interested in that, if you're just starting off, uh, that might be food for thought for you. Uh, the, at the end of the video, the, the moral of the video is don't wait to the uh, last 72 hours. Um... So I wouldn't really worry so much about a lot of that kind of stuff. You know, start stocking up food, you know, because it's just it's prudent to do it, especially if things are on sale, get some extra. Uh, but land, land is the thing that I think is going to be really problematic uh, going forward for people because when a lot of people want something like land where they're not making any more of it, in fact, with, you know, sea levels kind of uh, uh, flooding more areas, uh, there's kind of like going to be less land. So land's kind of more getting destroyed than created at the moment. So uh, yeah, on a ge geologic scale, I wouldn't really worry about that. But uh, certainly demand is going to go up, I think, for rural land the same way that it did during COVID. Uh, if you remember kind of towards the end of COVID, uh, yeah, even the middle of COVID, there was like this push. A lot of people uh, were realizing the issues of being in the city and there was this push to kind of get out into the countryside. It actually really worked out super well for me because while I was building the current place that I, I'm living in now, I was living temporary, uh, temporarily at an, a rural location, just like, I think it was like 11 minutes from here. Very, very good commute to get here. Got that house so that we could um, uh, build here. Um, and I paid something, something around $250,000 for that house. Lived in it for about three years. Three years later, I'm able to sell it. This is at that COVID peak for $350,000. So I made $100,000 uh, just because of the increase in demand for these types of properties. And I see us as being in kind of a low lull right now. We had that COVID bump. People have kind of forgotten that bad things can never happen. <laughs> I got the uh, trolls in the comment section saying I'm crazy to even think that a bad thing could ever happen. And uh, I see the potential for people starting to become concerned again, uh, you know, with various things that are going on in the world, which I'm not going to get into specifically in this video because you know, we talk about these things on this channel all the time. Um, I see there is being a movement towards uh, people getting concerned again and land prices probably going up again. I think now would pro probably be a pretty darn good time if you have plans to get some rural locations to do that. Um, and that's what I want to say in this video. That was, it was like 20 minutes about the why of all of it. But I think that's the, that's the moral at the end of the story is that if you have plans to try to get land, now is really probably a sweet spot for doing it. If you want to watch a video about land selection and how to kind of go through that process, here's a video here that's uh, kind of a primer for how to get ready for building on land. Uh, you know, if you don't want to build, you can get, you know, fixer uppers and things of that nature. You can get some deals on that. But I think now is probably a really good time to get land between that COVID bump and the next bump, which uh, I'll probably call the geopolitical severe instability bump, which I see coming in, climate instability bump. Those two right back on top of each other and financial instability bump. We got a, we got a lot of bumps headed our way. And um, at least two out of those three are kind of scientifically unavoidable, I think. The geopolitical instability bump, you know, people have the potential to, to avoid that one. But the mathematics of the financial issues that we're facing and the, uh, the chemistry of the scientific issues that we're facing are uh, fairly unavoidable. So at least two of those three are coming our way. And if you want to get ahead of it, I think now is a good time to get land. That's it. And thanks for watching.
Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.